What's up guys? Grim here. I am pretty excited. I just got done watching the Tryon live stream and they talked uh, quite a bit about the new Primalist Souls and let's just say that some of these abilities seem like they are going to be pretty broken. Uh, of course it's going to be absolute chaos if they go into the game this way and then they'll have to be nerfed at a later time. But we'll go over all that just shortly. I do have to say a couple of thank yous first. Um, to Steve, thank you for being such a big supporter of me. He's been a big donator to the channel on my Patreon account and everything like that. Steve, you've been awesome. Thank you so much. I'm sorry that you're leaving Rift. Uh, hope to see you back at a later time whenever you've gotten a little bit of time away from the game and can come back and appreciate it once again. Also, since my last video I talked about the ups and downs of uh, YouTube and all that well of course you guys came out of the woodwork and was supportive once again uh, Larmy I believe that's how I say your name uh, donated ten dollars on my patreon page and of course we do big giveaways on uh, the patreon page to anybody that donates even a dollar uh, as a way of saying thank you to everybody that's supportive towards the channel um, so we're going to go ahead and do an extra giveaway on this particular video because Laramie donated a full $10. Uh, let's go ahead and give away a, uh, racing snail. So if you'd like to take part in this giveaway, thanks to Laramie, go ahead and leave a comment, a comment section below with your character name and server. And in the next video, I'll announce the winner and then, uh, message you in your YouTube inbox and you'll be able to get the code there. Um. Also, Jan, thank you for the $5 donation on my PayPal account. You are so awesome. Uh, thank you to everybody that's supportive towards the channel, whether you're just watching the videos, hitting the thumbs up, whatever you're doing. I really appreciate it, guys. All right, so let's get into these Primalist Souls. Now, there are four souls that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the Mystic, the Farseer, the Predator, and a Primal Lord. Uh, the date that these are coming out is supposed to be the 4.2 patch, which is scheduled to come out in the summer. Um, now, if you already own the Primalist Souls, uh, Primalist Calling, should I say, these souls are going to be absolutely free. Uh, but, of course, buying the Primalist Calling in the first place does cost money. So, uh, these souls are a free addition to what you already bought, pretty much. So, yeah. Pretty cool. Uh, these souls are going to be uh, a, like all different spectrums of uh, uses. So otherwise you're going to have uh, different types of healers, uh, support, uh, melee DPS, just all kinds of different things. But we'll go over all that uh, right now as a matter of fact. So the first soul that we're going to talk about is the Mystic. And the primal avatar for that is a wolf. Um, it's basically a support soul that relies on the elements of life and air. Now, as far as what all the mystic does, uh, these, uh, the things that I'll talk about with these souls are going to be, uh, some generalizations, some abilities that will change before it goes live, uh, lots of different things like that. So let's go ahead and talk about what they, uh, spoke of on the mystic. I believe uh, the Mystic is the one that has Rolling Fog. Uh, I just watched the live stream and that's what I jotted down, but then I seen somebody else put uh, that Rolling Fog would be, um, let's see, on the Predator Soul. That, that's not right. No, that's not right. Yeah, it's the Mystic. Mystic has a Rolling uh, Fog. So basically what Rolling Fog is, is it's a, a radius that goes around your character that allows every ally uh, I believe an un, uh, like an unlimited amount of allies to stand within that radius and they will all be stealth so this allows you to like creep up on flag uh, flag guards that uh, think that they are completely safe out there they're watching for anybody that's coming up and going to call for help well now you can bring your entire group up there and jump that person and take the flag so it's going to cause a lot of tears in PvP to say the least, but it's a really cool ability. Also, this is going to be, since it's a support soul, 
it's going to have a lot of raid buffs and these are going to be on a 60 second cooldown uh, however it will have abilities that will reset these cooldowns I believe they said so you'll basically use these raid cooldowns uh, as they come up and then you'll have abilities to reset some of them as it goes along uh, that's the way I interpreted what they said so hopefully that's right um, also, they talked about how it will have a uh, like an ability that will give a run speed buff, and this will also make it to where your allies around you will uh, get the run speed buff, as well as you and your allies will uh, get cleansed of all uh, movement and pairing effects. So it's basically like a break free for everybody, for you and everybody around you, along with a run speed boost. So. Yeah, that's a crazy ability right there, to say the least. Um, okay, that's basically all we got on Mystic. Like I said, they didn't give uh, too many details just yet because a lot of things are in the planning phase. As far as what is finished, uh, uh, like past the planning phase, is the Farseer itself. So, And also, Farseer was the one that they gave the most information on because that's what he was on whenever he was doing the live stream. So once we talk about that, it'll be uh, quite a bit of information. Holy smoke, what is going on here? Wow, that was awesome. <laughs> All right, so the next soul that we're going to talk about is uh, Predator. And this has a primal avatar of a raptor. And um, it's a melee DPS soul with the elements of fire and death. All right, so as far as uh, what's going on with the uh, Predator, uh, I do need to say that the Predator and... Uh, the mystic are both going to be heavily reliant on the the focus bar as in you know you'll use abilities to build up towards one end of the spectrum you'll use an ability that's going to put you at the complete opposite end kind of thing and then build your way back up and its abilities are going to be heavily reliant on that uh, whereas like the healing souls uh, aren't as reliant on the focus bar uh, because it would be very bad if you couldn't cast certain heals uh, unless you're at one end of the spectrum or the other. It would cause complete grief in all healing situations. So, yeah. Alright, so for the Predator, uh, they didn't give very much information on this one. They did say that it is one of the souls that people may complain about in PvP because apparently it is... Um, Let's see, it has a very hard hitting four hit combo uh, rotation. So you use these four abilities and then there will be a period of time where, you know, you really don't have a lot to do. But this four hit combo is apparently going to hit extremely hard. So, um, yeah, but other than that, they didn't really give too much information on the Predator. All right, so the next soul that we're going to talk about is the Primal Lord. And this one uh, doesn't have a Primal Avatar at all. Instead, it has basically an ability called Rage of the Beast that will reduce all of your global cooldowns and increase your speed. So basically, it's going to allow you to fire off your abilities really fast during the duration of this Rage of the Beast. So that's going to be pretty cool. They kind of made... Uh, it sound like the primal lord was uh something that they were telling a lot of jokes about because they called it the cat thrower um this is basically a soul that is a melee dps soul uh but it's going to uh, uh let's see it's going to use uh like combos uh that will end with throwing a particular animal so uh take for instance uh, uh, now this soul is going to be heavily combo reliant so otherwise you use an ability uh there will be a second ability you're supposed to use after it and it'll it'll have a 50 percent buff if you use that first ability when you're supposed to so you use that second ability with the 50% buff and then the third ability will have a 50% buff as well and then you'll throw an animal after that. And they talked about the different animals that you'll throw is like snakes, uh, bears, scorpions, all kinds of different things like that. And they wasn't really talking about too much about how uh, the artwork is because the artwork isn't done yet. But they did say they kind of envision it like almost like you know 
grabbing it and throwing it, almost like grabbing a hawk off your shoulder and throwing it like a football or uh, from a quiver or something like that. that that's how they talked about it. it. However, the artwork is not done, so the, the, you know, the limitations on it aren't quite put to them just yet. Uh, they did say it's not quite a pet soul, so you're not going to be able to buy skins for these particular animals that you're throwing. But, um, yeah, hopefully it'll be cool animations like that, not just some kind of joke soul. Uh, but they did talk about how it's a really cool one. Uh, now, as far as the uh, Predator and the Primal Lord, they said they are me uh, melee DPS-ish kind of souls. So, so otherwise going to be a lot of melee abilities but there's also going to be ranged abilities with it as well and i imagine the throwing the animals is the primal lord's ranged uh, abilities all right so do i have anything else on primal lord yes i do like i said it's a heavy combo uh soul so otherwise those three abilities and then throwing an animal and then three abilities and then throwing a different animal uh, also, it has a talent that is going to cleave. Uh, they said they wasn't too sure how good that cleave is going to be, but it is going to have a talent that is going to cleave. Um, it also has a teleport forward uh, 15 feet ability, so that's pretty good. Also, it has another ability called Cornered Prey, which will basically root your enemy and then blast all of its allies away from it. So otherwise, uh, like in PvP, you'll be able to root this person, knock all of its allies away, and then it'll be you against that one person and uh, without all the other melee hitting you right then. So that'll be pretty cool. Um, that's pretty much all we have on the Primal Lord right now. Uh, the final soul we're going to talk about is the Farseer. In this one, uh, we'll kind of go over uh, some of the cliff notes here. But uh, they gave a lot more uh, details on the live stream. So I'll put a link to the live stream in the description below. So that you can watch it in detail and see all the abilities that I don't talk about. Because they were there were a lot of abilities shown with the Farseer. So I just can't go over all of them. Um, now the primal avatar for the Farseer is the Ouroboros. Um, it is an AOE healing soul and it relies on the element of life. Now uh, this soul is pretty much uh, past the planning phase. Uh, they're going into the other phases of it right now. The other souls are not past the planning phase. Farseer is the one that's pretty much totally built. Um, now it's going to rely on uh, what they call fates. Now these fates are going to be uh, like a buff that you put on yourself and uh, the buff is going to stay on you and uh, I'm not too sure if it goes away once used uh, as in like uh, say you have a buff that triggers whenever something happens and then whenever that happens if that buff goes away I'm not too sure but I know that the fates are going to be really uh, a heavy key factor in this soul and there's going to be four different fates uh like one in particular was like uh you put it on you and then uh whenever it gets to the point where your character is going to die uh you will self revive and it will restore 50 percent of your life um now if you get this as a legendary ability it's going to have a, a flat uh, 10 percent healing buff to you uh but you know once it's basically triggered uh it'll revive you and bring you back to life at 50 percent health but it will have you where uh like all of your abilities will be uh basically nerfed by 15 percent so your healing your dps everything will be nerfed by 15 percent uh for a while uh, i believe this uh fate also has a five minute cooldown so yeah um also, there's another ability uh, called Spirit Sight that is going to offset the rolling fog of the Mystic. So this is basically going to be an ability that allows you to see Stealthers. Uh, yeah, Rogue Class will definitely cry over this ability. Uh, also, anybody in the Mystic Class using the rolling fog, if if you try to sneak up on a Farseer and they have Spirit Sight up, this is going to see right through your, your ruse. So that's going to be pretty crazy. Um, 
Now, there is a broken ability with this soul that they're thinking it may be broken. They're kind of worried about it. And I'll go ahead and let uh, uh, Kian talk about it in this video. Uh, it's called Spiritual Guidance, so see what he says about it. I, I personally worried specifically a Farseer ability I might have gone overboard with, and it's too good. Total note, playing a Farseer as soon as possible in before the nerf. I'm, wor I'm worried it. about this ability, specifically. Oh, okay, Spiritual Guidance. Can you describe that? So, this is a buff you place on an ally, and uh -huh. this has a six second cooldown and one second cast. It also will generate a Soul Shard, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, next time they take damage, they leave a Void Zone underneath themselves that deals damage to everything in the area for six seconds. So you basically can keep one of these up at oh, a time. Oh, okay, wait. I was, I was hoping that it would create a void zone and they fall through the world never to be seen again. Well, so it gets worse. So there's a, so there's a mechanic, <laughs> oh, so there's a mechanic inside Farseer that says whenever you use Insight, Ren Spirit, or Spiritual Guidance, which is the things that push you towards Fury, you get a Soul Fragment. You can't Soul Fragment while you have Empowered sitting on you, which is something that's the next thing we'll get to. Mm -hmm. And they're consumed by other abilities to do various things. So the first of which you get is called Empower Soul. This causes your next ability to be empowered, and that's what this bottom effect is. Uh, when you cast Empowered Spiritual Guidance, the next time that ally takes a hit, themselves and three additional allies all drop this Void Zone. So if you're all humped up on a monster, you're just going to drop four of those right on top of it. Interesting. Sign me up. Yeah. I, like, immediately. So, uh, and, it's, and it is tuned with the knowledge that you can do that, so it does less by default if it's not empowered than a, a comparable AoE would be, especially given how low in the tree it is. But... If you're using all, if you you are using your empowered on that, you're not using it for healing also. So it's it's got some power trade off there that's pretty interesting. And if your allies are willing to cooperate with you, you can uh, do some serious hurt. That is, is super super yeah. cool. Okay. There you have it, guys. The soul that possibly is going to have broken abilities in it, but we'll see how it all pans out. I hope you guys enjoyed this overview of the Tron live stream as far as what they talked about with the Primalist Souls. Uh, hopefully it was informative to you and I didn't stutter too much. Uh, thank you to everybody that supports my channel. I hugely appreciate you guys. As usual, my name is Grim, and hit the thumbs up button if you liked the video, and I'll see you next time.